Good afternoon. Let us start from where we stopped last hour. We have seen that propeller characteristics can be written in terms of KT and KQ, which are functions of J. And from KT, KQ, we can get the efficiency also as a function of J. Now, how does this uh, character, how do these characteristics look? If I draw a KT KQ diagram as a function of J for a ship, then KT would be highest at J equal to 0 and it will fall to a 0 value continuously. This is j equal to 0 here. And kq is slightly higher, higher than 1 tenth of kq numerically. Therefore, if you are plotting the kt and kq on the same diagram, it is conventional to plot kt and ten kq on the same scale, 10 times kq. Then as I mentioned, kq is slightly higher than 1 tenth of kt. Therefore, 10 kq will be slightly higher than kt and that curve would look something like this. And with this, if we plot the efficiency, Efficiency will be 0 here, V A by N D, you see the, the J being 0, efficiency will be 0 at J equal to 0 and it would go to a high value somewhere here. Somewhere here, come like this and go down like that. That is the efficiency curve. This will be kt, this will be 10 kq and this will be efficiency curve. This curve is very interesting. You see at j equal to 0, kt and kq have some values, have the highest values, but efficiency is 0. What is this condition physically? Physically this condition represents what is conventionally called the bollard pull condition. That means, if I tie a ship's ship to a bollard at port and run my propeller, then whatever be the speed of propeller, rpm of the propeller, there is no forward speed because the ship is tied. So, V A is 0, therefore, J is 0 and the propeller will develop some thrust which can be measured by the tension in the rope and it will be consuming some power, so torque will be there. So, thrust and torque are there which give you k t and k q, but there is no forward speed. That is the so called bollard pull condition or the slip is 100 percent, right. Here k t equal to 0, this point is the other interesting point. What is this condition? What is this condition at k t equal to 0? That means, thrust is 0 at uh, this forward speed V A, at particular V A, the thrust is 0. Now, what is the we have seen in a in case of a aerofoil. This is the baseline or sometimes we can represent this as nose tail line if the propeller was uh, Okay, in this case, 
the angle of attack no not with horizontal we had done this diagram before this is uh, this is the radial uh, velocity 2 pi n r this is the axial velocity which are perpendicular to each other. Remember we had seen in the propeller when, we, when I had explained shown you the propeller that if the propeller is rotating like this there is a velocity water velocity in the opposite direction which is equal to 2 pi n r r p s into radius 2 pi r p s into radius and plus the propeller is going forward. So, that is like this axial velocity is perpendicular to this. So, that is these two velocities the resultant of which is a velocity v r. Okay. Now, this angle is the geometric angle of attack. I am saying geometric angle of attack you realize because this is the base of the propeller and this is just making the angle with it this is the face of the propeller. So, the resultant velocity making an, an angle with the face of the propeller is called the angle of attack. Okay. But since there is an angle of attack there will be thrust this is not a known thrust condition. When will known thrust condition come? No thrust condition will come if my propeller blade is like this basically no thrust condition will come when the um, uh, flow is on the no lift line there will be no lift. You remember we had discussed about no lift line that is if I by controlling my rpm suppose I keep moving this V a this side further and further let us say by reducing my rpm or I increase the V a and lift this up then my angle of attack will reduce right. I will still keep getting lift even when the flow is exactly along the face line I will still get lift. There will be a theoretical line if the flow is along this line there will be no lift generated this is called no lift line. this should be the line from which the angle of attack should be measured because actual lift will be now. It. So, this is called hydrodynamic angle of attack it is not geometric. <coughs> Are you clear? Yes, it is different from no straight line. It is different. No straight line can be something like this. If if I have even otherwise, nose is nose center is center of the nose is somewhere here. Even if we don't have a camber, the no straight line line is there, which which is slightly higher than the pitch line, uh, the face pitch line. Okay, so your geometric angle of attack is normally with respect to face line but it could also be with respect to nose tail line which is geometrically known. So, the angle measured with respect to a geometrically known line is called the geometric angle of attack which need not be the no lift line the geometric nose tail line is not normally the no lift line the no lift line is slightly above that. So, hydrodynamic angle of attack is slightly more than the geometric angle of attack as shown in this diagram. understood ok. Now, suppose this is my no lift line and I have V a and 2 pi n r in this fashion and the water flows exactly on the no lift line there will be no lift 
there will be no thrust, therefore there will be no thrust. This is strictly not correct because if I draw the lift in this direction, this is the lift perpendicular to the flow if there was lift, but there will also be a drag. Now, this drag will have a small component of thrust in this direction. Thrust is in this direction, in the direction of V A. If it is falling on no lift line, this is 0, there is no lift, this is not there, right. But drag will be there, drag is a viscous effect. Now, this drag will have a small lift component, so you will still get a small lift. So, depending on the scale of the model, there could be a change in the line along which there will be no thrust. That is the position when thrust equal to 0, which is very nearly equal to the no lift line. Am I understood? So, this is the here thrust is 0 and therefore efficiency is 0. Now, you see if you draw the efficiency curve now, you will find the efficiency is high highest somewhat nearer towards this limiting j value where k t equal to 0 rather than to j equal to 0 side. Okay. What is the slip here? there is no slip here, V A, uh, uh, this slip here is 100 percent and here slip is 0 percent. Therefore, there is no thrust, no lift. Some the, the ships, the propeller operates at maximum efficiency somewhere with 10 to 20 percent lift, uh, slip. Okay. You know what is slip, no? The pitch. Yeah, right. N into P. If that is equal to V A, then there is no slip. That is more or less this condition. You see the efficiency curve. This is what is the most interesting part of it. The maximum efficiency occurs somewhere here, which is uh, having a 10 to 20 percent slip, but till here the efficiency is increasing only slowly and after this the efficiency is dropping sharply to 0, right. So, this gives us a very good idea how to design our propeller propeller must necessarily be designed slightly to the left of the optimum line. So, that in the event of an rpm drop and j increases, the propeller does not fall go to the right of this in which case the efficiency will sharply fall. Effective slip S E if I write that is equal to N P E minus V A divided by N P E, where P E is effective pitch. We have defined effective pitch before. If the pitch keeps varying, then we can define effective pitch. So, slip is defined as, so this is the distance it should have travelled if there was no slip, if V A was 0, that is a 100 percent slip case. So, this is the slip if there is some V A and it is not equal to N into P E. So, this can be written as P E by D
So, if I put If I put this, then okay. Is that clear? That Yes, this is same as uh, k t equal to 0. No? No? Yeah. So, that is uh, 0 slip. Now, there is a very interesting uh, observation you can make. Now, the ship is going, the propeller is uh, behind the ship. We are not considering uh, the behind condition, but imagine that the ship is going forward, propeller is rotating. We have got certain open water characteristics of the propeller. Now, we reverse the propeller, right ship is still going forward. That is, V A is positive, but N has become negative. Right? So, how will the propeller behave? Similarly, now you have gone, propeller is re rotating reverse, you are going, started going backwards. Now, V A is negative and N is negative, both are negative. So, you are in another domain and then after that you reverse the propeller to positive direction. So, V A is negative, N is positive. So, four alternatives arise. V A is positive, N is positive, V A is positive, N is negative, V A and N both are negative and V A negative, N positive. Right? This is this you can think of these four alternatives as the four parts of a quadrant. I will show a diagram how propeller thrust torque characteristics will vary. Can you see this? Is it visible? Yes? We have here V A positive this side and negative this side. So, therefore, j is negative this side, j is positive, this, no, j will v a by n d, <coughs> j may be positive or negative. Let us say v is negative, v a is negative and v a is positive. Similarly, n is positive and n is negative, right. Then k t and k q you can see in the V A positive and N positive, V A positive this side and N positive this side. This is the K T K Q diagram like what I showed you, right. When it is negative, when it is V A negative, no, N negative, N negative and V A positive, these are the diagrams. Right, and similarly, N negative and V A negative, this quadrant, K T K Q, and similarly, N positive V A negative. This is the diagram. This is called a four quadrant representation of a propeller characteristics. Conventionally, we do not bother about these three quadrants. Our propeller mostly operates by this one quadrant that is V A positive, N positive. But there are cases when you have to know 
the propeller characteristics when one of these is negative, one or both of them are negative. How do you determine this? How do you determine propeller characteristics as well as this four quadrant characteristics of a propeller? We have seen the similarity between model and propeller. So, it is possible for us to do a model test of a proper propeller in open water. How will such a model be tested? How can we test a model of a propeller in a uh, testing facility when it is in open water? So, the best way would be if I can have a boat where the propeller instead of being fitted in the aft, it is fitted in the front well ahead and my water line is somewhere here. If I have this and the boat moves by means of the towing carriage as I did the resistance test, I move the boat this way here. When the propeller is moving into undisturbed water at a forward speed V A, that means the water coming onto the propeller is V A and I am rotating the propeller. And inside this rotating is being done by a motor which is called a dynamometer, a propulsion dynamometer which houses the motor as well as thrust and torque measuring uh, sensors, RPM, thrust and torque. So, I can measure RPM, thrust and torque and I can move the boat at different speeds, I can vary the V A. So, V A n I can vary and corresponding measure thrust and torque. So, it is possible for me to measure J, K T and K Q. What are the other conditions? We have discussed that geometrical similarity must be maintained and, uh, and the propeller surface must be adequately prepared to generate turbulent flow. This type of experiment is called a open water experiment, propeller open water experiment. From this experiment, we can determine the thrust and torque as functions of speed and rpm, we can uh, it is easy to measure the four quadrant characteristics in a towing tank. If I have this facility, I can move the propeller in one, one direction and move the uh, carriage in the other direction, I, I can get the other uh, quadrant behavior, I can move both of them in reverse direction and get the behavior and it is possible to generate the four quadrant behavior. Okay. Now, you see we have not seen how propellers work, propeller theory we have not studied yet, but you can imagine that the propellers are very complex uh, hydrodynamic devices. So, one of the ways to get quick data is that if I had a large number of experimental values and if I could fit them into sort of a uh, as functions of j and various geometric quantities, then I, it would be easier for me to calculate the characteristics, open water characteristics of a propeller. Now, how do you get large amount of data and how do you feed them into a uh, this thing? So, what has been done over the years is what is called the series, propeller series have been manufactured and tested. That means, some geometric parameters of the propeller have been varied at steps and the propeller uh, detailed geometry has been extrapolated from these variations 
and then they have been tested. And if by testing a few propellers and if we get that KT, KQ versus J diagrams, it is possible that within these parameters we can extrapolate or interpolate for propellers which fall within this group. That is called series propeller. Do you understand what I am saying? I cannot take a supercavitating propeller, a normal propeller, a trawler propeller, a launch propeller and a bulk carrier propeller and form a series. That is not possible. To form a series, I must have a parent propeller and the other propellers of the series must be child of this propeller. What do I mean by that? Suppose I say my blade section would be segmental like uh, circular, back will be circular, face will be flat, each section. Then the four or five propellers I determine of this series all will have same geometric characteristics that is face will be flat and back will be circular. What I can vary? I can vary pitch by pitch diameter ratio, I can vary blood blade area ratio or I can even vary thickness, thickness fraction. I can vary these quantities and generate maybe 10, 12 propellers. Now, when I have 10, 12 propellers of the pitch varying from one value to another at steps of steps so that I get 3 propellers of varying pitch. Then if I want to design a propeller of this geometric characteristics, but a pitch in between these 3 things, then it is possible for me to draw, interpolate the KT, KQ and J values between these. Am I clear? So, such a series is called, su such a type of propeller testing is called propeller series. And today we have a number of propeller series, one of them, the one that came out first is the Gone series. Gone series of propellers were developed and tested at Admiralty Experimental Works AEW UK in 1953 and subsequently published. So, published literature is available for Gone series propellers. They were basically segmental sections, the back segmental, face flat and the outline was elliptical. And the variations that were done were as follows. Z was fixed at 3, that is number of blades were 3, pitch by diameter ratio varied from 0.6 to 2, developed area ratio A D by A 0 varied from 0.2 to 1.1, thickness diameter ratio varied was fixed at 0 0.06 and boss diameter ratio was fixed at 0 0.2. So, basically as you can see gone series propellers had two variations blade area ratio and pitch diameter ratio and the sections were all segmental. Can you see this diagram? Sorry? Okay. Okay, dimensions you need not bother. Just see this. This is the elliptical section. This is point two boss. Okay, this is the elliptical section, elliptical outline starting from here point 2 blade area ratio to 1.1 and each section was segmental as I have told you. So, this is basically the gone series. This series has been found useful in uh, designing propellers for trawlers 
and tux. Okay. Now, the next important series is the B series, it is called Troost B series or Wageningen B series or NSMB B, B series. This was uh, developed in the uh, NSMB Netherlands Ship Model Basin at Wageningen and uh, a whole lot of tests have been conducted in this uh, B series propellers. And as I will show you, what are the variations that have been taken place here. Uh, in fact, it has been tested perhaps most expensively, extensively this series both in Europe, in the United Kingdom, in um, USA and many other places. starts from two blades. Here the pitch by pitch ratio changed from 0.5 to 1.4, A by A0 was fixed at Four blades. Five blades. Six blades. and seven blades. Okay. Now, two B series propellers as you can see have been tested from two to seven blades. Pitch ratio varied from 0.5 to 1.4. And A by A0 has been different from different blades. Can you tell me why? See, simply if you have two blades, you cannot have a blade area ratio of 1, impossible. Then two blades will have to cover the entire blade surface. The blades will be very big, and perhaps that is not necessary, it will only increase drag. But if you have seven blades, then of course you can get any. Uh, blade ratio, but here they have stopped testing after 0.85, because you do not normally have 7 bladed true series fully immersed propellers. And thickness ratio has reduced as the number of blades have increased and D by boss diameter ratio is more or less at 0 0.167. Uh, diagrams of these propellers are KTKQ diagrams are extensively available in literature. Let me see if I have got something to show you. Can you see this? Is it visible? This is the two series propeller. What is the characteristics of this propeller? You see the face, it is more like an aerofoil section at the bottom till about uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 r. It is like an aerofoil section with slight lift at the forward leading and trailing edge. But as you are going up, the sections are slowly turning towards segmental. So, at the bottom where there are aerofoils, they are slowly changing towards segmental at top. And uh, you can see the outline of the blade, 
and see the pitch ratio. Pitch is constant above about 0.5 R, but below that slightly reduces towards the tip, but this is particularly for four bladed propellers. For all other blades, the pitch is constant, the pitch ratio that is given is constant. The pitch ratio that is given for four bladed propellers apply at 0.7 R. So, if you are doing a two series propeller at uh, four bladed, then you must give the same pitch distribution to get the same result. Okay. Uh, can the propeller characteristics be represented by any other way? Since propeller has been uh, investigated for a very long time, there are uh, some other conventional methods by which propeller characteristics are uh, represented. One of them is the so called BP delta diagram. heard of this? What is BP? Very funny units, this is not in SI unit. First thing I must tell you, this is not in SI unit. So, these are these quantities are not dimensionless. D is in feet, N is in RPM, P D is equal to P D is in BHP, that is British HP, not metric HP. You see in SI unit, we use power in kilowatts and V A is speed of advance in knots. Okay. So, as you can see this delta, outwardly looking at delta, you will know that this is inverse of J, but this is dimension, this is not dimensionless. Mm, this gives you the relationship of torque with speed and RPM, this relationship that is you can draw a diagram of delta versus V p and that will give, give the relationship of torque with uh, uh, speed and RPM. Similar to, similarly you can have the other diagram with regard to thrust, this is called uh, V u. You can have B P delta diagram and B U corresponding B U delta diagram. So, this will give us the relationship with thrust B U and B P will give relationship with uh, torque. So, you see B P will be related to K Q, delta is related to J and B U is related to uh, K T, but these are not unitless. So, if I write the relationships, it would look like this. You can derive it yourself. You will arrive at a constant. And similarly, you will get BU. I am only giving you the BP and uh, in fact, BU will be related to KT in a slightly different manner because this, uh, these divisions are same. Here we have this is represented only in terms of uh, T, not T into VA in KT. Okay. So, how does this diagram look?
can you see this yeah so you have bp here and pitch ratio here and these are the delta lines constant delta lines right so if you have got a pitch ratio for your propeller you enter that go to the corresponding delta where it where that constant pitch line is intersecting and from there you go down and read the bp value from there you can get the power okay that also gives you the efficiency these are constant efficiency lines so that point will also tell you what will the efficiency of the propeller what do you see in these efficiency lines they are more or less reverse of the type of efficiency lines we got like in the ktkq diagram we got a optimum point in the efficiency line here in this efficiency lines here you get the maximum efficiency point and through that you can draw a optimum efficiency line this is the optimum efficiency line therefore it is possible for us that for a particular pitch ratio to know what is the optimum efficiency what is the bp and from there we can calculate what will be the power for a particular pitch ratio now mind you in this diagram this is only a typical diagram such diagram will be available for each parent of the trust b series that has been shown to you okay the table that i gave you for each pitch ratio each uh, blade area ratio each thickness ratio there will be one such diagram bp delta diagram these were the initial representations of propeller characteristics uh, that were tested Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just that uh, uh, where the BP is maximum, that is the optimum efficiency line. Po maximum power it takes. Yeah. Okay. There is another way of uh, representing propeller charts, which is not very commonly used, but sometimes it has been represented. It's called mu sigma diagrams where this is just a representation sometimes it is thought convenient so it is done like that Sigma is thrust and torque. So, sometimes propeller diagram is represented in the mu phi sigma nomenclature as has been explained here. Well, uh, you may ask me why is it reprinted like this people who use this must have found some use but it has not been generally accepted as a method of representation so it should be one by kp which one mu equals root This is how a mu sigma diagram looks. This side is mu, this side is sigma. Okay, and these lines are constant pitch ratio lines, and there is a optimum diameter line here going like this, and these are the efficiency lines. Basically all representations are from 
from the same thrust and torque that you have got. It's only representations you change so that you can use it for your convenience. Today, this representation is no more necessary. With the advent of computers, you can write a TKQ for a particular propeller as a uh, function of j numerically. You can write a polynomial of j, k t k q as polynomial representations of j and then you can do all your calculations using that polynomial. That is one way. This series diagrams have now been put into regression analysis and the entire k t k q j of b series as well as gone series is now available as functions of uh, j and geometric characteristics such as pitch ratio, uh, blade area ratio, thickness ratio and boss diameter ratio. So, this regression analysis is, has been done and coefficients are available. So, it is easier to use them rather than the charts. However, having a set of diagrams with you is welcome because anytime you do some calculations it is easy to check for diagrams rather than only figures. Okay. I have finished what I wanted to say today. Any questions? If not, we will stop. Thank you. Good morning gentlemen, let us uh, start talking about propeller behind a ship. We have seen how the propeller beha behaves in open water in the last class. What happens when you put the propeller behind a ship? First of all, as we have discussed earlier, the propeller works in the wake field of the ship. Therefore, the speed that you get, water speed falling on the propeller would be less than the shift speed or in other words, speed of advance V A will be less than V S. Am I right in saying this? That is when the propeller works behind the ship because there is a wake we have already discussed, the speed of water that is falling onto the propeller will be less than the speed at which the ship was advancing. That is okay? okay. So, that is one effect that we have, the effect of wake. Secondly, we have seen that the when the propeller was not there, the resistance of the ship was equal to the tow rope resistance. We have defined the resistance of a ship as the force required to pull the ship by means of a tow rope when the propeller is not there. Now, we have fitted the propeller. propeller basically is a hydrodynamic device which pulls water from ahead and throws it back. So, like a, like a uh, axial fan, the water flows past the prop prop propeller imparts energy to the water. So, water flows at a higher velocity around the ship. Now, we have seen that the velocity of water is related to resistance of the ship. So, when the propeller is moving behind the ship, due to change of velocity of water in the stern part, there will be a change in the force required to push the ship forward, which will be higher. In other words, the thrust that the propeller would give 
would not be equal to the resistance of the ship, but will have to be higher than the resistance of the ship. Can you understand that? So, T will be greater than R, that is we say thrust effect, thrust resistance effect. Okay, thrust resistance relationship is not equal to, we had said earlier that if I provide a thrust equal to resistance, the ship will move forward. Now, what we find because of the action of the propeller, since the velocity of water near the stern will be increased, the resistance of the ship with the propeller working would be different from if the propeller was not there. How do you determine what is the quantity wave? We will come back to thrust reduction again. If we can measure the velocity all over the propeller disc, we will have a three dimensional velocity field. An axial component will be there that is along the axis of the prop, uh, propeller in the direction of the ship's axis. Another will be maybe transverse, maybe vertical, that is basically three dimensional flow or in polar coordinates, we can say a velocity component in the tangential uh, direction at any point r tangential and another radial. Okay. Now, normally these radial and tangential components can be ignored, they are small in comparison to axial wave, axial velocity. So, whenever we are defining wake, normally we tell in terms of axial velocity field only. That does not mean other velocities do not exist. That for convenience, we consider axial velocity, which is the major portion of the wave, major percentage of the total velocity field. That means, in general, you can appreciate that if the ship is moving this way, water velocity also will be parallel in this axis mostly. Okay. So, when we have that, we can uh, if I have the propeller and uh, at any circumferential direction, if I measure the velocity at various radii, that is various theta angles, axial velocity, then I can say the average if, if V r theta is the velocity of water at any point r and theta, then velocity of the average velocity of water in that circumference, I can write V dash R equal to V R theta V theta divided by 2 pi from 0 to 2 pi. At all theta, I integrate the velocity and take the, this is basically taking average. Okay this is at one radius r. So, the overall wake over the whole propeller disc will be, if I integrate this over r, am I right? So, that can be given as uh, 1 by pi r square minus root square. 0 to 2 pi and this is r b 2 pi. Which is equal to We have found out this V dash R that integrated over the whole radius. That is all we have done from the boss to the propeller T. Okay. So, this wake, the wake due to this is defined as V by V. This is called uh, nominal wake. these items I have mentioned. On the other hand, if it is a gear drive, 
then the power loss will be more ranging between 4 percent to 8 percent depending on whether the engine is extreme aft or is moved forward like in naval vessels. So, if we reduce this amount we can easily know what is the DSP available at the propeller end. This is at that rpm we can also calculate the torque. So, that is the torque available to the propeller at that rpm with that forward speed and if we know the resistance if you know the characteristics of propellers, we can calculate weight, thrusters, margin, etcetera. So, we can say DSP or PD is equal to 2 pi n q, q we are measuring on the shaft. So, we can get uh, the DHP. Thrust power, what is thrust power? T into V A, right? And effective power R T into V V yes it is V V S ship speed. Please recall we had defined this before. So now the drop in speed uh, power from P B that is B H P to D H P is defined by an efficiency called shafting efficiency. Is equal to B H P by D H P which we have seen can vary from 2 to 8 percent depending on gear drive or non gear drive aft engine or slightly midship engine or whatever. The other efficiency between P D to P E, if I define the efficiency, I call that as Q P C or quasi propulsive efficiency, which is equal to P E by P D. That is, if this is my output required, this is my input to the propeller, then the efficiency is the ratio between output by input P E by P D. We will see in the next hour how this can be broken up into components and how we can utilize it. We will stop here. Thank you. <coughs>